hello hi this is uh, nikhil khadge uh, i'm a software architect uh, in a company called octa uh, based in usa uh, i work in a workforce identity cloud and this is this is a presentation regarding a review paper more than a research paper i submitted in a software engineering section the title called machine learning enhancing intelligent search and information discovery just to set some background uh, about me and uh, what this paper is going to uh, the the review work is going to talk about uh, so the this paper does not have any new research being introduced or a new algorithm being discussed this is basically getting the fundamentals of machine learning and how we can leverage it for the search and information discovery uh, area so this is going to talk more about what is machine learning what are the algorithms and i'm not going to go pretty much in detail uh, in each of these uh, most of us have some knowledge about machine learning i'm sure you attended a talk yesterday which talks about how to get mysql queries returned by asking simple questions uh, there is another review uh, uh, similar area where you can ask a lot of questions and ai will give you uh, required answers back using machine learning so the, the the field of machine learning has advanced a lot in last few years and the reason i started writing this review paper is uh, in the company of tap i work in a uh, workforce identity basically i manage the end user uh, profile which is basically an identity of end user so we're talking about if not billions of billions but we are talking about millions and millions of identities like like you me and anyone else uh, who uses octa and we have a lot of profile data which is obviously a pii so we don't have access but there are admins who performs a lot of operations on those uh, data and we have lot of data set in order to find out what admin is looking for and most of the times admin makes mistake in in order to find things and they end up spending a lot of time so what we started looking at is like how do we make admin a uh, functionality more easier instead of they they hitting their head against the wall in order to find something which is very simple and one option was hey we have a data set why don't you feed through some algorithms and maybe give a prompts to uh the admins and that's where this paper started right i mean we did uh, other works on top of it but i thought in the series of multiple uh, papers this might be an introduction which has which is pretty basic about machine learning and their algorithm uh i'll move on to the next slide so basically as i said introduction right what are the key con concepts if you look at the venn diagram here you will see that there is an embedded circles in one one in the other uh hold on a second uh, yeah so machine learning algorithms are revolutionizing intelligent search and information discovery capabilities as i said right like uh, machine learning is helping uh, end users whatever it is maybe an admin maybe a, a person like you me uh, they basically using search capabilities which are powered by machine learning algorithm behind the scene in order to incorporate we need to need techniques which are multiple learning algorithms machine learning gives you and system can automatically extract insights and pattern from a vast data repositories like that's what we have been trying to do that hey we we have lot of data how do we extract that data and make use of it uh so as i said basic concept what is ai artificial intelligence as everyone knows this was the ai was a machine completing a task that previously would have deemed human intelligence today we recognize that intelligence isn't a skill anymore but itself but it's an intelligence is defined by how efficiently it is used to learn new things so ai will set out to mimic how human mind tackles and performs a given task right and there are different variations of uh, ai ai sub categories you can there is a, there is reactive there is limited memory there is awareness uh, ai and and generative ai and what not uh, the second circle inside the uh, bigger one the ai is machine learning right so key difference between uh, ai and a machine learning is 
AI is nothing but a subset, as you can see in a Venn diagram. It is a branch of a computer science that mimics the way human learn by using data and co complex algorithms, right? And there are various types of algorithms. I'm going to quickly touch base in the next slide uh, about this algorithm. Uh, if, what is deep learning, which is a smaller subsection? Again, as I said, uh, if you compare AI and the deep learning, the, the deep learning discovers that uh, it's a subset of a machine learning. Uh, deep learning imitates how the neural network of of the human brain functions. So basically, it is in, imitating what how our human brain functions. So it's based on a proactive modeling in such a way that a toddler learns new things. Very simple example. Uh, I have a toddler at home, and it happens most of the time. If there is a truck passing by, he will generally say, it's a car. So I, I have to tell him, yeah, it, it's a type of a vehicle car, but it's a truck. So as and now, more you more you emphasize on these things, they will eventually learn, hey, this is actually a car. Even though it has four wheels and a door, it is a car. It, it's a truck rather than a car. So they will start differentiating, uh, differentiating by learning uh, as we emphasize them some of these things. The concept of machine learning is integral component of advanced search and knowledge exploration. Involves deploying algorithms to computer system, which derives insights and make decisions autonomously without explicit program. Uh, this paradigm embodies the uh, artificial intelligence where algorithms continuously learn from data to enhance performance in a targeted task. Uh, by leveraging semantics metadata, uh, the discovery and synthesis of web services machine learning significantly boosts the efficiency of our information retrieval procedure. The, uh, the fundamental of machine learning, right? So as I said, we, we're going to quickly touch base on what types of algorithm uh, they're available. Uh, most of them we actually explored uh, when we're doing our research. The machine learning algorithms can be categorized uh, in supervised, unsupervised, reinforcements, deep learning. There are various uh, algorithms currently available and each comes with their own uh, unique strengths, plus and minuses. Integrating these algorithms into intelligent system always improve uh, your pattern recognition, prediction, extraction capabilities, and there therefore it helps in, in terms of how you want to search a given data in a large data set and do a uh, information discovery. Uh, quickly, a uh, few bullet points about each of the learning is like, what is supervised learning? As name itself suggests, uh, is basically a machine is fed through a massive amount of data that has been annotated with highlighted feature of interest. So basically you have a data set, uh, but you're just not feeding the data set. You're also annotating what typical features you're looking for. Now, very simple example is you have millions and millions of photos of a different animals, but you can start annotate animals uh, or the photos of a dog in particular. And when you fed through the machine, it will eventually learn, hey, this is how the dogs will look like, right? And the next time when the consequent photo has been uploaded, it will automatically start sorting saying, hey, this is basically a dog. So that's basically supervised learning. You're basically supervising uh, how the machine learns a particular thing. Whereas unsupervised learning, the name suggests like it, it's a second category. Uh, so algorithm has to be developed ahead of time. So uh, uh, and the, the way algorithms are written, it basically looks for uh, the similarities in a data so that they can categorize together. So you can write something which will tell that algorithm that, hey, you are looking for, for an example, you're looking for, uh, in the photo, you're looking for a four-wheeler car instead of a boat. So you will write an algorithm such a way that automatically when it scans through, it will realize that, hey, I'm looking for four wheels in the photo. If I see four wheels, yes, it's most probably a car. I mean, you might see four wheels for many other places. So you'll have more and more categorization that it should have a headlight, maybe it should have door, something like that. And automatically it will start filtering those things uh, accordingly. Reinforcement learning, uh, basically it's, it, it's a similar where machine perform task and when there is an error, it constantly doing trial and error method. So it learns itself that, hey, looks like I categorize incorrectly. Uh, and then it'll go and fix itself and then it will run eventually. That's why it's a reinforced learning. There is something called, uh, 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 hold on. Oops, sorry. Oh, did I come out of, uh, yes, any supervised, uh, 
sorry, uh, semi-supervised learning, which is basically somewhere in the middle of uh, supervised and, and, and unsupervised. Deep learning, I'm not going to go much detail that this paper also doesn't talk about it a lot. Uh, but again, we, we initially discussed quickly that deep learning is nothing but how your human neurons uh, react. That's what machine is, is being trained to. Uh, applications which we can use uh, in order to uh, using the machine learning uh, in the search is basically what you need is a, a natural language processing, which is NLP. Uh, that's a machine learning technology that allows computers to understand, interpret, and manipulate human language. So as I said right previously, we saw uh, another presentation yesterday which says, hey, give me uh, the sum of total revenue for this department, right? You're basically talking in terms of a human language and then this language is being processed using NLP and then you interpret the human language in order to create whatever uh, uh, data you're trying to retrieve. It could be a, a MySQL, it could be any other database or it could be something else from it. It could be sorting through photo, right? Give me all photos of Bay Area uh, something like that, or Bay Bridge, and then it'll automatically use you. So that's the NL, natural language proce processing is very key because it is, it's going to interpret and uh, manipulate human language in order to give you the data back. Uh, it's a, a branch of, obviously, it's a branch of an AI uh, that uh, uses statistical and machine learning models, along with a rule-based modeling uh, human languages to enable computers to recognize and generate a speech and a text. Uh, this helps machines process and understand human language so that they can automatically perform a repetitive task. As I said, right, they, they will, uh, more and more you ask questions, they'll continue doing the same task again and again. Uh, the, the, most of the time you'll see that's being used uh, in various organizations for communication, such as email, text messages, uh, your news feeds. Uh, so it's been very commonly used. So NL, NLP softwares can analyze the intent and sentiments and respond to a real time to human communication. So uh, that's where, I mean, you, you, I have noted down some of the areas where it has been excessively used, uh, Im image recognition, your grammar checking, spam detection, autocorrect. Uh, we we utilize this in, in uh, our, our, our research and review too, in order to generate, as I said, like if a human ask a question, how do we generate a query format which you'll understand by by our own uh, query language. And we have our own query language which will explore that information. Uh, machine learning and information discovery. So as I said, like you, you have a lot of data and you can scan through a lot of data, but in order to do that, you need to have a solid algorithms. Uh, so machine learning algorithm enables advanced data mining techniques like uh, clustering, classification, anomaly detection, and, and so on and so forth. This uh, by extracting this valuable insight, identifying patterns and making accurate prediction. Uh, it's enabling personalized content recommendation for large data set. This technique significantly improve information exploration and discovery process. So let's talk about quickly what are these techniques and which one we can leverage. Uh, clustering and classification, these are machine learning techniques. Uh, uh, they basically group a data into clusters or classes. Uh, the main difference between uh, those two is clustering is unsupervised learning. Uh, we discuss about unsupervised, whereas the classification is supervised learning. So basically summarize clustering helps identify natural grouping within the data set, while classification assigns a predefined labels to do data instances based on their features. Both techniques are valuable in data mining and can be used for different purposes, such as customer segmentation and targeted marketing. A very good example is uh, uh, we do a lot of uh, system log processing where we could detect a certain operations by admin and we classify them as an expected one. Whereas there are certain operations which could be highlighted as, hey, there is something wrong or a malicious activity. So this is being fed through a different clustering algorithms in order to detect um, and, and actually give a report to an admin saying that, hey, looks like there is something wrong versus, hey, this, this operation looks pretty pretty normal. Uh, anomaly detection is basically what we go through a lot where we identify the rare events or items or observation. As I said, like the classical example is admin uh, of your organization is recently changed their multi-factor authentication and then immediately updated the password and then immediately 
try to uh, add or remove user in a certain privileged account, right? Those sequence of events uh, can be detected as an anomaly, right? How frequently do you see that pattern where uh, uh, an admin of a, a given organization is trying to do these things together, one after the other. Uh, it could be a very well uh, 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 legit use case, but then we should be able to flag it. And anomaly detection using the algorithm makes it much, much easier. Uh, this is becoming increasingly important in cybersecurity where I work playing a crucial role in identifying privating malicious activities in computer networks, as well as, as I said, like uh, managing certain accounts, uh, your privilege accounts against, for an example, Salesforce or your Google uh, admin account. So we should be able to detect those uh, anomalies easily by, by applying this machine learning algorithm. Uh, detection systems. Uh, intrusion detection systems offer significant potential to enhance capabilities uh, in recognizing and countering the cyber threats. Uh, predictive analytics is a uh, it's another way, uh, branch of advanced analytics that makes prediction about future outcomes using historical data uh, combined with the modeling and data mining techniques and machine learning. So a good example is um, we have a lot of historical data which we uh, we know exactly what is the general trend of an end user uh, most of the time or even for an admin. A uh, good example is a certain application being added to an organization, which means most probably you're looking to get a new application assigned to all of your organization. Uh, that could very well means you might hit an rate limit in the third party system. So if you are planning to do something similar, this predictive analytics can tell an admin in advance saying that, hey, if you are planning to add a new application to the system, you're looking to have rate limit being increased in a third party app, otherwise it is going to fail. So these type of analytics helps us to, in order to detect uh, what could be the future outcomes and prepare in, in that direction. So we can in advance, an admin can request, hey, can you increase my rate limit? Because I know for sure I'm going to make a lot of requests in this time window because I'm onboarding something or uh, we acquired a new company. And that's why I want to do this XYZ operation. So with the predictive analytics, you, we should be able to predict that, hey, uh, because of this operation, these are the five things will happen. And most probably you need to take care of a couple of these items in advance. Uh, text mining, uh, we talked about uh, in the past, uh, in the previous slides too, that basically it's extracting meaningful insights on the written resources uh, and that helps in order to, you uh, know. Uh, Nithin, uh, sorry, uh -huh. uh, I think the slides are not moving, Nithin. Oh, they are not? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. I thought you are like, explaining uh -huh. all these things, so I will disturb you. Yeah, no. now I think... Yeah, now the slide, okay, machine learning and information discovery. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize. I'm almost okay, on the last fine. slide now on conclusion. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, my bad. Again, doing it after a really, really long it's time. Okay. So maybe I didn't it's realize okay, no uh, how to get yeah. in a presentation. Extremely sorry. Uh, so uh, do you see the conclusion side now? Uh, so... Uh, basically, as I said, like this paper is more about a review than a, a thorough research. Uh, hopefully, the subsequent work in this area uh, done by me and my team will 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 come here and present our findings along with uh, the results. Uh, but the quick conclusion is machine learning uh, significantly impro uh, improved intelligent search and information discovery. Combining machine learning, knowledge graphs. Uh, I didn't talk about knowledge graphs much, but that's actually a very critical thing. You might see a few details about in the uh, in the paper itself, how that has been leveraged or can be used. Uh, boosted the accuracy and uh, uh, in interpretability of an intelligence system, so better searches. So, but however, there is still uh, a lot of opportunities in, in terms of integrating machine learning with the natural language for a better query understanding. We definitely saw uh what we could what magic we could do but there is lo a long way to go uh, even for us when we start using it uh, evaluating of large data set and addressing ethical implications using machine learning for information so there is a lot of improvement uh that's the conclusion thank you